Every 1,000 views a channel has earns them $3. A basic cost of living, like you earn like about $3,000 to about $4,000 a month. Then you will have to kind of do the math, like how many thousands of views do you need to reach $3,000? So Hi, my name is Ashraf. I go by Ashraf D. Chess on YouTube. I am a designer by day, but I do YouTube content by night. Could you share why you primarily chose to make long-form content instead of short-form content? I generally like long-form content more uh, because it gives you a chance to talk about it more in-depth versus short-form content. I definitely think that short-form content is more popular now in the pro like, content creator space. Uh, TikTok, IG Reels and YouTube Shorts are very necessary for a channel. So. Like for those who kind of like are in the YouTube game, treat them as an extension of your channel, like a like oh like a 60 second trailer to kind of guide people to your channel instead of uh, like treating it like an enemy. I used to think of short form, like, I'm never gonna do TikTok, I'm never gonna do short form. Then I realized oh it's just your content broken into pieces. So yeah, you can record like a five minute segment and then you can chop it up into like 60 seconds and then you just post five times. So yeah. Yeah, because for me I have a huge aversion to doing short form content. But I think what you said makes a lot of sense. I guess in today's time and age, what you say that it is necessary to also focus on short form content? Uh, ooh, good question. I think it's necessary to a certain extent. Like if I had more resources, more time, I would like to spend more time on short form content because I think that it just gets more eyes onto your channel. It's like uh, casting a wider net to a different set of audience. Think of it like a billboard for a, a billboard advertisement for your channel and like short form should work together with long form. So like I like to do box opening videos where I open like a new set. So what I'll do is I'll just post like the highlights on TikTok and then like oh I wanna watch the whole video. So I'll, I'll they jump to the channel. So hopefully I mean like that it's been working so far but I have I have been neglecting my TikTok page for very long. I haven't posted in like over a few months, but slowly, here, hopefully I get to get back on it. So Ashraf, if you don't mind sharing, how much are you earning based on the current number of subscribers that you have? Okay, so at a kind of basic metric cost, every 1,000 views a channel has earns them $3. That's roughly a conversion you can kind of make for the average layman YouTuber. Uh, the RPM goes uh, even higher for more popular YouTubers. They can earn like maybe Every thousand views, they get like five, six, seven dollars. But generally, it's about a thousand views, three dollars. So if you want to calculate, like let's say, basic cost of living, like you earn like about three thousand to about four thousand dollars a month, then you will have to kind of do the math, like how many thousands of views do you need to reach three thousand? So it's thousand times thousand, essentially. Like what's that a million? Uh -huh. Is that a million? Yeah, a million, million views. So that's a mil but that doesn't mean like you know. A million views for one video it's a million views across a span of one month so like if you do like 20 videos and all of them hit like 50k you probably won't get there but to get to that point your average number of channel subscribers has to be above 80 to 100 thousand uh, subscribers and that's generally what I, the advice that I learned was that um, if you are not above like 50 or even like 80 from YouTube alone, you won't be making enough to earn like a proper living, especially like in Singapore because this place is just too expensive. But that's why there's other avenues of, uh, I would say, uh, fin financial stuff that you can get from YouTube. There's Patreon, there's uh, memberships, there's also like, you know, if you have your own merchandise, you can sell it to gain a little bit of money. Uh, so you cannot just think of YouTube as your own uh, money sort of like revenue making machine you have to kind of have different channels and then it creates like one month worth of like salary so it's up to if you are interested in starting a channel these are some of the things that you have to uh, learn from but if you start a channel to make money then you will never make money you have to start it because you want to start it you want to make content about something you're passionate about you're interested in or something you just want to talk about or it's just something you want to share about I think that's the important thing you got to make something that you want that you're passionate about sharing about because at the end of the day like the money is very difficult but you can potentially get to there yeah
Yeah, I've seen a lot of advice from YouTubers saying that you shouldn't start a channel just to make money because it wouldn't work. And you touched a little bit on that as well. Could you elaborate more on why that is so? Uh, okay, because uh, okay, if you start with the intention of like, okay, I'm going to make YouTube my main job. I want to earn X amount of dollars per month from YouTube. And here are the steps that I want to take to do that. There are people who are trying to do that, you know, faceless channels, just random information. But that's, that market is saturated as it is. And how are you going to make sure that you are consistent across the long run if you don't even love what you're doing? Right? So passion comes first and passion will run out. So it's like, you know, same thing. Right? You want to go work out, you want to start a new hobby. You will, you are, your first, I don't know, two weeks or two months, you, your passion fuels you all the way. Then after that, it all ends up being like discipline and you know, maintaining a schedule for yourself. So uh, yeah, don't start a channel for money unless you know that it's going to really take off, which is, uh, it does happen. You know, luck, you never know what's going to happen. Like some, you make a meme video, suddenly you get 100K subscribers. That happens to so many YouTubers that we see. Um, but how, what are the chances that's going to happen to you? You can try it, no harm trying it out. But realistically, the slow grind is better than a lottery win. Something. Yeah, such wise words, honestly. Do you mind elaborating a bit more on sponsorships and if that is an additional revenue for YouTubers and if that's something that's common or pretty rare to come around? Okay. Uh, for sponsorships, it depends on the size of your channel. Um, there are guides out there. I think if you can Google them, uh, if I can find the link that I use, I'll share with Crystal Eyes. Um, it's number of subscribers that you have times like watch hours or something um, and then you they'll give you like a range so maybe someone like 10 to 20k subscribers can charge about 100 or 200 for a segment spot that's like 30 or 90 60 to 90 seconds on youtube uh, versus someone that's bigger they can charge like up to 500 per video which is you know that's pretty a lot considering that you're only talking about that sponsored for like that sponsored post for about like 60 seconds so uh, you have to kind of be diligent in negotiating i have a lot of sponsors that i don't take money from because they are giving me product um, eventually i'll reach to a point i think after 20k i will like be more confident in asking for okay if you want i want the product but i will charge you this amount for a 60 second spot um, i have send that to companies and then they ghosted me after that it's just normal because mostly they don't want to pay <laughs> but if uh, if it's a company you are interested in working with they usually have affiliate programs so if someone buys the product you get a, like five percent or something um, and that's usually how it grows so you get kind of like passive income in a way not a lot but if you continue to share it continue to grow it people are more aware of the site then you will get money based on that so there's affiliates, there's sponsorships, uh, and all of them are determined by the deal you set with the sponsored company uh, or the company that wants to sponsor you versus like uh, what is your kind of rate for your channel. To wrap things up, do you have any words of advice for aspiring designers or YouTubers? Okay, uh, I'll address the designers first. Um, so. I think that creativity can only get you so far, like internal creativity. Uh, you need to, one, hone your craft. So learning your program inside out, any hidden things will kind of give you avenues to do creative stuff that you wouldn't even think of before. Then secondly, it's like inspiration is everywhere and you need to constantly flood your brain with it. Uh, Instagram, uh, TikTok, uh, Behance, uh, what, Pinterest or something like that. Uh, because you need to always be exposed to other different kind of artworks, different designers work, and then you get a little bit more uh, inspiration for your own sense. Like imbue your own creativity with inspiration you get from others. So that's my take for a designer, my advice for a designer. Uh, for the YouTuber, for the aspiring YouTuber, I would say if there's something that you love talking about and you can't shut up about it, make content about it. If you love food, food is a 
food is a, I would say, an oversaturated market, but people still get popular off food videos because they love talking about it. So if you love food, you want to love talking about it. Like, it's not enough that you love it and then that's it. You, if you love it and you can't shut up about it, make content about it. Yeah, if you can't shut up about something, like me, I can't shut up about the One Piece card game, then I make content about it. Yeah, that's my advice. If there's something that you love, really like you want to talk about it with someone you want to talk some and you can talk about it for like hours not just like 20 minute sprints hours make content about it you will get far and the number one advice i can give to someone doing youtube is to be consistent that's that's all there is to it that youtube is no secret you gotta be consistent you gotta post even if it's once a week it's enough but the longer the spaces in between videos the the more you won't be inclined to post. Yeah, so yeah, be consistent, that's it. Wow, words of wisdom. I really need to learn. Someone who has been through it. Such, such good advice. Thank you so much, Ashra, for today's video. And we hope to see you again soon. So please subscribe to Ashraf D Chess on YouTube. And yeah, I'll see you in my next video.